Good afternoon. My name is Joseph Lloyd and I am a huge fan of cars used in old British TV series filmed between the late 1950s and late 1990s. Join me on a journey as we look back on over 40 years of British television and its relationship with the automobile. I made a selection of videos last year talking about a lot of these series and I'm doing it again to make them even better. Well, another day and another old ITC series. This time um, we will be looking at The Secret Service. It's probably Jerry Anderson's least famous Super Mario Nation puppet series. It was filmed um, in 1968 and early 1969 and broadcast in 1969. There are only 13 episodes of this and they're 25 minutes each. It was made in kind of a similar way to Joe 90 and Captain Scarlet in that the puppets you see are not the sort of Thunderbird or Stingray type. They have much smaller heads and which are much more realistic in terms of the proper anatomy of a human being. Thunderbirds and um, Stingray have oversized heads because they used to put the control mechanisms of the puppets inside them. And they do make them look a lot more sort of endearing, really. Um, I think the Captain Scarlet, Joe 90, Secret Service puppets are sort of less popular in that way. However, the Secret Service itself is a bizarre series. It um, really takes the biscuit for weirdness in terms of Jerry Anderson anyway. It was his favourite series that he made, apparently. And I kind of see why. It, it's got a lot of quirky appeal to it it's sort of a contemporary spy series before the protectors but made half with puppets it's very difficult to describe but i'll best i'll do my best to talk about it now there is a fictional organization in the world of um the um the series called bishop um we just get this acronym acronym right british intelligence service headquarters operation priest and they have operatives all over the country um, who are posing as people like parish priests. The um, head of the division is um, Jeremy Wilkin, who's just known as a bishop. He has um, an assistant called um, Blake, who is played by Keith Alexander. As with many other of these Anderson puppet series, the cast I'm talking about would have played a load of minor roles as well. Um, that goes for Sylvia Anderson, who played a character called Mrs. Appleby, Gary Files, who played Matthew, um, and um, David Healy, and David Graham, who played all sorts of kind of minor roles. The person we see most of all, though, who is um, in the circle of intelligence is Father Stanley Unwin, played by Stanley Unwin, who was an Australian comedian 
in the 1960s and Jerry Anderson thought it would be fantastic to put him in his new puppet series um, and make him a, um, a priest who's an undercover agent for the British Secret Service. In addition to this, his gardener Matthew, who's also an agent, um, has a, something called the miniaturizer, which he and um, Far Rowan use. And Matthew gets shrunk into a case for reasons um, that become sort of apparent during their, uh, their missions together. It's not the most um, sort of fun thing to be shrunk into a case and carried around, but, you know, he has to do it. And this is Jerry Anderson, after all. Some things just look at, you know, interesting rather than actually serving any practical purpose. That's just the way that, they, that these things go. The filming was made by a sort of mixture of puppets um, in the studio and special effects in the studio in Slough and um, then location filming in the sort of immediate area, sometimes in London, but more often than not, you'd be in the Buckinghamshire countryside near Slough. There's, uh, you know, things shot in um, Wexham Pot Hospital, which is near Slough. Um, there is some filming... Um, in Beaconsfield, but most of it's very close to where they actually um, had their production base. I've at, I've been to the site on Stirling Road in in Slough, where um, the Jerry Anderson Century Twenty One Studios were. There were three industrial buildings eventually that they um, actually bought or had had built for them um, in the mid sixties. They don't exist anymore. They were literally demolished about two years ago, and it's interesting to see where they are now. If you want to see what they look like, just watch the first episode of um, The Secret Service called The Case for the Bishop, and you'll see the offices of Helio Automation in the back of the offices, which just, just fields at the back. There's no um, sort of big housing at the back because there was a lot more room at the time, but those are the actual buildings that, that existed. Sadly, when I went to visit the site two years ago, there was only a very small portion of the buildings left, although we could see the outline. Very sad, really, but, you know, that's progress. One of the things that's peculiar about Stanley Unwin, apart from the fact that he spoke um, a type of speech called Unwinese, which is a variation on English with weird words in it just to sort of confuse people and my gosh does it confuse people it was the reason for the cancellation of the show because Lou Grade head of ITC just didn't think anybody would understand what he was talking about but he also drove a Ford Model T uh, known as Gabriel which you would have seen in the picture 1917 Ford Model T which has been modified at, at the back to be very short and the run plate is very appropriate the T42 there aren't too many cars in the Secret Service because the episodes were only 25 minutes long and um, they only made 13 of them because Lou Grade told them to finish production of the, uh, you know, after they'd sort of um, uh, made those first half a series. And I don't really know what on earth they would have done in a second series. I think they'd used up quite a lot of plot lines and you know some of them were... Um, kind of recycled some plot lines from, from like the Avengers. So the episode that's um, called Hole in One is just like the Avengers episode, The 13th Hole, which was broadcast in 1965. The Feathered Spies is just like The Bird Who Knew Too Much, which was broadcast um, for The Avengers anyway in 1967. So... I think there was a lack of originality going on. And neither of these episodes by the same writer there would have been in the Avengers. So I think they just literally ripped it off. But anyway, apart from Gabriel, um, in More Haste, Less Speed, but it's quite a, a sort of funny um, episode. I really like it, actually. Uh, there is an Austin A35 princess, sorry, A135 princess um, from 1953 that ends up not crashing into a tree. Do you, it just sort of stops short of a tree and you see some smoke coming out of the bonnet. Um, that race against a motorbike and um, I think an ambulance, but we won't talk about those because they're not cars. In um, 
the episode called The Cure, you will see a racing car. Um, it's typical of Derek Medding's special effects work. It looks really good. It's not based on any one particular racing car, but I thought I'd put it in there. Um, he was so good at special effects, Derek Meddings. He you know, deserved several awards, and he got them. He worked on one film, Superman, loads of different things, apart from um, the Jerry Anderson series. And you know, he deserves every accolade that he could get. In Last Raid of Buffalo's Halt, we see a 1961 Ford Transit Mark 1 Securical van. And then also in the same episode, um, there's a Ford Cortina 1600E. Um, it's not a press car or anything. The plate is local to Slough, DKX840F. And um, there are more Fords to come up, but we'll discuss a bit later. In School for Spies, we see uh, a Jaguar um, Mark II. I think it's a 3.4 litre. Um, that is used in um, another episode as well called To Catch a Spy. That's 4884DD. In The Feathered Spies, there's another Jaguar Mark II. It's a slightly different colour. Um, again, the same kind of uh, era, a 573NMX. In um, The Feathered Spies again, there's a 1961 Mercedes 220 SE Coupe. I'm assuming a lot of these cars were supplied by um, the people who make the series themselves or something, or they just borrow them from other people because um, they didn't really need too many of them. And the actors you see are just, I don't know, people they just had around, sort of just standing and look a bit like puppets, which is a very strange thing to, you know, um, hire an actor on a basis of. But anyway... Um, in a case for the bishop, there is a 1960 Wolseley 699 police car um, that's used in several um, contemporary series and film of the time. That's X U X Y U 464. It's a 699 as opposed to 6110 because it's um, um, early enough for that. And in the Feathered Spies again, I don't know why there are so many cars in the Feathered Spies, but it seemed to be. There is a 1968 Vauxhall Viva Deluxe HB Estate. So we're already at the last section of the video talking about the cars of the Secret Service because... To be honest, there aren't really that many. I, I'm, I'm actually giving you all the cars that are used in any kind of meaningful action in the series. The rest are just background ones. Um, so this is about as far as I think it's going to get. In School for Spies, there's a 1967 Ford Corsair 2000D. Uh, same episode. No, sorry, no. Um, in A Case for the Bishop, the first episode, uh, Father Unwin temporarily drives a... 1966 Ford Zodiac that's supposedly at its disposal in Heathrow Airport. I don't know how they got pushed to film at Heathrow Airport, but they did. It was obviously a bit quieter um, at the time, although, you know, uh, right at this moment, it's very quiet. Um, in School for Spy, there's another Ford. It's a Ford Zephyr 4 um, from 1964. In Last Road of Buffalo's Halt, um, the car that they used to block the road is a 19... 62 Austin Cambridge, I think it's an A60 model, 163 ELO with the number plate right in front of the grill, interesting for cooling. And then the last car is a 1960 Carmen Gear. Now, I couldn't find in, in my notes here the episode that's from, but I'm sure you'll see. I think Sylvia Anderson or a character voiced by Sylvia Anderson drives that particular car. So there we are, just a, a short uh, video today on the cars used in the Secret Service. There's not an awful lot more to say about that. There are some nice models in it, loads of detailed models that, you know, Century 21 were very proud of of making, and they really should be because they made some decent stuff. The sad thing about this is that this was the last ever series made in Super Mario Nation by Jerry Anderson. Um, UFO wasn't made in puppets, it was made in live action. That was being immediately after this and started filming in April 1969. So this was kind of the last of this long series of things that had begun with 
I don't know, Adventures of Twizzle, which I'm never going to cover on this channel. So, and I, I think you'll probably thank me for that. Um, as well as Torture to Battery Boy. Torture to Battery Boy is one of the most disturbing things anyone could ever watch. So we're not going to think about that. Um, thank you ever so much indeed for watching this episode of Cars on Television. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. We look at something a bit more conventional next time. Um, don't forget to also like this video, leave a comment below. And uh, we'll see you again soon.